Okay, so we are going to just very quickly make some decisions about these different things that I've got here, about whether they are sine rule or cosine rule. What about this first one that we have? It's a sine rule, and the reason it's a sine rule is because... Yeah, we've got these two pairs of things that we've got here. What about this one that we have under here, sine or cosine? Sine rule as well, we've got another things of pairs that are opposite each other. And then this one, this one is a cosine. Why is this one a cosine, Shahan? Because it involves, it involves three sides and an angle. And then this last one down here is a, a cosine, again, because it's got three sides and an angle there. So I've just said whenever we have the two side angle pairs involved, it's the sine rule. Three sides involved, we can use the cosine rule. So I think, um, I know you guys have had some homework that is set. I think kind of in the circumstances of things, like if there are things we want to go through the homework, we can do. But um, yeah, so just 9C, that we think 9C. Okay, let's have a quick look at that now. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm going to do this next bit, and then we'll go through that one in just a second. Okay. So what about this one that we've got here? Does this look like it's the sine rule or the cosine rule? Yeah, this looks like it is the cosine rule. Now, if you remember, I printed this little section for you on the back of it. This one actually says there are two different ways of approaching this one, OK? You can either do the sine rule twice, or you can do the cosine rule. The, for me, the, sorry, the textbook recommends doing the sine rule twice. Um, and I, when I, I can explain what I mean by that, that you could do the sine rule with this, and then you could do the sine rule with this to find out the angle. Then you could find out the third angle, and then you could do the sine rule with x and that known angle. You'd find the third angle by just doing 180 minus this angle minus this angle. My preference, though, I think, is actually to use the cosine rule. I personally prefer to use the cosine rule for this one. So we'll have a quick look at doing it with the cosine rule. The two things that are important with the cosine rule are this one and this one. Those are the ones that are your a the b squared and the c squared bit, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to get, knowing that it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So we get 3 squared equals 4 squared plus x squared minus 2 times 4 times x times the cos of 32. So that's 9 equals 16 plus x squared. And now I've got 2 times 4 times cos 32. So that's minus 8 cos 32x. And I'm just going to bracket that so that it doesn't get muddled up with getting caught in the x. So what type of equation is this? It's a quadratic. And we know for quadratics, we want to just get it in that normal kind of way. So we have x squared minus 8 cos 32 x, and then we've got 16, take away 9, which is uh, 7. Now, I think this is the reason why the textbook recommends doing the sine rule and then the sine rule, because they forgot that our calculators are awesome and can solve this quadratic really, really easily. So I'm going to just go to my graphics calculator. And you know you can just type in. You, do, you, do you all know how to do the, the polynomial solver on your calculators? For the b coefficient, you can literally just type in that a is 1, b is minus 8 cos 32, and c is 7. And we can just go straight to the answer for that one. So let's try this, see if I can get the same answer as you guys. We've got 1 minus, whoops, my calculator's in the wrong mode, so that's going to be a bit annoying. OK, let's change it back to degrees. So you've got 1 minus 8 cos 32 and 7. What does anyone get for their answers? So we get that x is equal to 5.52. I've said centimetres, even though it's probably not in centimetres. Or x is equal to 1.27 centimetres. Now, are both of these valid answers, do we think? So which one do you think would not be valid, and why do you think it wouldn't be valid? I think that the 1.27 still could be valid, though. I actually think they both could be valid.
but this, there's no longer a hypotenuse in this triangle because there's no right angle. The hypotenuse only applies when there's a right angle. So there are actually two answers that can be for this. Why are there two answers? Because the other angle. So if I do a sketch of what they are, we've got uh, 4 and it's 32. And then this could be... So there's the one that's been given, and there's the other one that's been given. So this is the one where it's 1.27. Or you could have 4, 32, and 5.52, and that's 3. I haven't drawn it very well to scale there. 5.52. But they're both valid. The reason you can check that they're both valid is because if you think about what, what value this is not allowed to be, can you think of what number this could be that would make this triangle no longer a triangle? Other than negatives. Other than zero. There's still some other values that if it came out here that would not be possible. What would happen if that value was one? Try and think about what that would look like if you drew a triangle that had a side of four, three, and one. It wouldn't connect. You would have four, you would have three, and one, they're never going to connect if they have an angle because four and three make, uh, sorry, three and one make four. So the sides would never touch each other. It would just be a line, wouldn't it? You would have, if you had, that was one of the sides of the triangle, it was four. That was another side of the triangle. And that was another side of the triangle with three and one. If they connected, it would collapse and it would just be a flat line. So the condition here looks like that the value of x has just got to be greater than 1. Just to think logically about how that would come about, because 4 is this longest side here, both of these answers are actually valid because they, you can imagine a triangle where that would be true. Yes? Yeah, and why do you think you're going to get two answers if you do the sign rule twice? How, how do we, um, what happens when you do the sign rule? You get the 180 minus the angle as well. So that's why there's going to be two answers that come here, because there's the ambiguous case that we looked at last time. So we will do it with the sign rule now. There are two approaches. So you could either do the sign rule twice, or we could do the cosine rule. Let's do the sign rule twice. And we'll see what happens when we do the sign rule twice. So I'm going to just duplicate this slide, and we'll do now the, sli the sign version instead. OK, so this time we'll do the sign rule twice. So I know this pair that I've got here, so I'm going to do this pair, and I'm going to figure out what this angle over here is. So because I'm trying to figure out this angle, if I call it theta, I'm going to start off with sine theta over 4 equals sine 32 over 3. So uh, sine theta is 4 sine 32 over 3. And so theta is the inverse sine of this. 44.95. OK, so I'm going to just do a quick idea. If this was 44.95, and in a second I'm going to find out the other one, we've got that this is 44. And actually, we may, we may come up with something that shows that both of the answers aren't true. So we've got 44.95, and we've got 32. So what must this angle at the top here be? 103. So you did 180 minus this minus this. What did you say it was 103? 0 0.04. 0 0.04. OK, so this is the side we're looking for. And we know that this length over here is 3. So if I want to find out x, I will do x over sine 103.04 equals what? 3 over, sine 3 over sine 32. Now, when you solve this, what do you come up with for x? 5.5. Uh, 5, 2 centimetres, if you multiply it by the sine of 103.04. And that 5.52 centimetres is indeed the 5.52 centimetres that we got from here. OK? But we need, now need to see, where has this 1.27 actually come from? And is it valid? I'm hoping it is valid, because that would make sense to me. Now, at this stage here, we said that theta was 44.95. But we know with the sine rule, that it's, uh, there's an ambiguous case. They haven't told us about any of the angles being acute or obtuse. They've only told us about this 32. So if I come back over here 
and I now say, okay, well, there's another value of theta, and the other value of theta is 180 minus 44.95, which is... 135.05. Okay, so I'm now going to draw a diagram of this again, where this one down here, instead of it being 44.95, it's going to be 135.05. So I've changed the way it looks. I've made it bigger, so it's 135.05. That angle there is still 32. The one that's got 32 has got a 4 with it, and the one that's opposite the 32 has got a 3 with it, and we're looking for the x. Have I just done that right? Yeah. So what would this angle at the top be then? So you did 180 minus the 135.05 minus the 32, and you got 12.95. So we now come up with a triangle that is still possible, right? Because all of these angles are still positive. So we're going to do this final step again. Apart from this time, it will be x over sine of 12.95 equals... I will do the 3 over 32 again, so we get 3 over sine 32. And um, what does that end up with? 1.27 centimetres, which is the same answer that we got here. Okay? So the cosine rule produced two answers. And the per what thing produced the two answers? Why? because it was a quadratic, and quadratics have two solutions. And it made sense, because the values of x were both greater than 1, because that's what was the only one that would have worked. When we did it with the sine rule, what created the two solutions? And how do the two values of theta comes from our knowledge that if it's an acute angle, if you want the obtuse angle, you just do 180 minus that one that you have. Yes? Would there be specific questions that would ask you to use um I'm trying to so I'm trying to think in the next exercise that you have there will be some that have that but I think you can do all of them as the cosine rule if they told you for example that if they said that this angle down here was obtuse or no let's say they've said that this is acute right clearly if this one here is acute and this is three and this is four because these are both acute angles this has to be quite a long one. It clearly has to be longer than four. If it was an obtuse angle instead, it would have looked like this, where this is four. I've tried to keep it looking as similar as possible, and this is 32. This is x. And instead of the three being like that, the three has kind of changed, so it's over here like this. If they said that in this angle theta, if it was obtuse, your sketch should tell you that x is shorter than four. So you would be able to figure out which one it would be. If it's a short side, it would be the smallest value. I haven't seen them do a question like that before, but it's kind of interesting to think which of those two values it would be. So that's why x is either this or this one. However, for this triangle, which one then is the most realistic answer out of those two? For the triangle that was pr printed and given to us. The 5.52. 5 However, it's not drawn to scale, so they could have just randomly put some things on the wrong, sides of it. Like I'm not sure. That this, this topic doesn't come up a huge amount by itself. This topic normally comes up like embedded within other things, which is why we learn this one like in year 12 rather than like in year 13. It gets used rather than it's like a question completely solo. So I, if it was a question that was completely slow, solo, then maybe, I guess. OK, so let's just push on with this. Um, why don't you guys just have a quick go at doing these two questions that we've got here? And then we'll do some problem solving with this in just a moment. So we've got a couple of questions to practice.